call it rebellion, it's okay, it's rebellion. But we von Vienz, we don't call it rebellion. He came in the market loud to all, every to one bay. Oh, my day man, go say history and born bay. As okay, it's rebellion, but no time we are chapter nine. History book and born bay. In September 1910, just a month before events began unfolding, something occurred in the ruins of Nan Matal that seemed ominous for Soquez. Well, when they were constructing Nan Matal, they were not, uh, they were not the only few people in Nan Matal constructing the uh, city. They were from all over the islands. And Soquez were assigned a section of the walls Metalenium is assigned to some section, Kitri, and they were all divided up. So Soke's corner was the one that collapsed. And so that was the, the then they said that was that was the omen that you know something was bad was gonna happen to Soke's because that was their corner. Germany had claimed possession of Micronesia eleven years earlier. The German government felt that it was high time that its island colonies became a productive part of the empire. Gustav Bader, the newly appointed German governor, initiated a series of public improvement projects. The people of Ponape were to begin a mandatory road building project. So Kez was selected as a place where the project would begin. Chairman can near I'll go to Sangha Rowyatame Sansa Kita Ranwood. I look it it Iraelman Weahal Rekasaneti me all man me the man government megale a man to talk ran is of the mouth and pari we are here public service. During the uh, construction of the uh, road in Sokes, the road construction reached a point right past by the Protestant church now today in Sokes Poa, in Winsane. The road construction was somewhat uh, helpful in the sense that these people would work and then they would be given uh, flour, you know, food, rice, and stuff like that. Me, one morning, German, you, Marx, me, killed the young old guy, so my town is a and young Al, we are assistant supervisor. Me, then Marx, Bayo, did that. The man chosen by the Germans to supervise the Sokes workers was Somatau. Yeah, Somatau and Sokes is, is his title. But he was the leader of the con, uh, people who were constructing the road, appointed by the Germans. He, is he was originally from Metelani. He is of the Dipun Pan Mei clan. Well, Somata was a warrior. 
he's got a band of uh, young men that went on. He, he fought uh, in several battles around Bombay. So many times of us, every year, so many women, more men say, Mana, let go, Bombay. Then we in Spain, as I said, we have been younger, more more guy move away. Then born in Bombay, born in Spain. It was not long before trouble arose between Sokes and the German government. I heard about was I coming to this governor and asking him to increase the salary of his people. And this governor didn't, didn't want to pay attention to him. I saw him to talk with him in a moment. Moment was I, or so much of what to do on the governor, but he ran Bucky, Poyna, yeah, don't at all. I remember the governor, the Sikhani Sang was I, and our officer, a certain punky, a certain way to a letter, but we are mocked the long moment we were on was I. At that time, Sukhesh did not have an hour. The highest title of Sukhesh was Wasai. Sukhesh at that time included all of Net as well as Palakir, although Palakir was at that time still autonomous. The Germans were demanding, sometimes employing physical punishment in dealing with local people. Seven men chairman, uh, we are corporal punishment. Uh, we are young and demon. Korea, we are young later. There was a man named Latelin. He used to commute to work from Ipali, from the end of Sokes, up to the construction site. And then every day you would stop by the uh, director of the public work project. He called him Olbon. Olbon was married to a Bon Bayan woman. This Bon Bayan woman uh, was uh, very attractive, half Bon Bayan, half Men Wai. She was very young when uh, these things were happening. The story has it that she died in uh, 1974. And this Latalem, the guy would come up and, you know, ask for drinking water and then would talk to the lady. And that irritates Olbon because he doesn't want this guy to be talking to his wife. But for some reason, almost every day when this guy comes uh, comes to work, he would stop by, ask for drinking water, ask for water, and then talk to the lady. So it got to a point where Olbon was couldn't take it anymore. So he he wrote a note and gave it to Latelem and asked Somadown Sukes to take Latelem to the governor's office here in Colonia. So they did. Took the note. Samadon Sogas took uh, Ladelem with him on a canoe. Came up here and went to the governor's office. But others offer a slightly different version of the story. At night when he would sneak into her room to see her, she would not be there. And after inquiring, he found out that Latala was the guy who was coming in and taking the girl away. He was in October 1910. All born Katarato Latala, then Kapana, but Kapana and Panawi, but then I met Kamut. And when they got there, they found out why they were 
asked to take the note to governor's office. Ladling is supposed to receive his punishment for bothering uh, Allborn's wife. They tie this Ladling on the table and bank it. Grab the guy, strung him up, and pull with him. Shredded his back with the, the whip. But the beating got so bad that the Ladilan couldn't walk after that. And he was bleeding. So Samadaw so had to, you know, help him and take him to the canoe, to their canoe, and paddle back down to Sokes. And as they were approaching the coastline at Molok, Shakaran Molok, those people at uh, Imun Sein who were doing the uh, road construction noticed that the guy was lying on the center platform of the canoe. He couldn't move. So they all dropped what they were doing and then walked over to where the, where the canoe, right by, right where the Protestant church is located right now. And they saw how this guy was treated like animal. He was bleeding from neck all the way down to his leg, his feet. So Samadam and Sokas told those people, say, today we're gonna stop working on the road. There's something has gone wrong. Uh, we need to decide what we need to do next. So that was it. That was the end of the road construction. Everybody left. Run over to Sokos, where we are William Litt. Where we are. That's the one come down. Kaparangkan, where we are, we are Kaukawit. Marabanu Wong. Menjai Mankan. Benan Kamadubo. Tena, so much I went so close, but I wrong young organ. We were the dog and I'm a man that is one. They built their own, killed a very large pig. And before it was cooked, as soon as they covered it, they opened it up. And uh, they cut it to small pieces. And they made a pact right there that they would fight to the death. And one of the questions from Salmata was uh, any of you, uh, young people or people from Sukesu who gathered there, who wanted to fight with me, will eat this piece of yes. raw uh, yeah. pork. Holborn, the German overseer, was surprised the next morning when he arrived at the road construction site. Holborn spoke whistle, chin mata, mega ima barata, ira masagrata, poyaki mama kei mali, mia mga wiyatar ko kapo fiong kano, krapin mo sing kasip naip. เราไม่โอ้โลกจะพอละจำมันมีมิชชั่นอยู่มีตันไปนั่นอันโซโอเปอร์เตอร์มันแม่อาปาลีมิชชั่นทางนั้นเราก็นั่นมิชชั่นโ
important office of Treasury goes down, Wapin Dunbury. Governor or na Secretary, or men what love they may done. Well, that's why the governor went to Sokes, because the construction had stopped for a few days. So the governor wanted to go down and negotiate with Wasai, who was the head of the chieftain. And the day that he went down to see Wasai Sokes, Somadown Sokes had already gone to a place called Nalupur, also in Sokes. There was a pile of rocks. It was a foundation of a, of a residence. And they sat on the, those rocks waiting for the governor to walk up the trail from Tanipe. As soon as they see the side of the governor walking up with his uh, assistant, Samuel aimed his gun at him and fired. That made point the, the gun at, at the governor, but he was kind of nervous. Couldn't shut it. So Shabbat took the gun from him and then killed the governor. Ariolo, a kiss mine. Sans wet is to know mine caca and casky. Then I to work a school year. As a matone so cursed. Mocata casky. There were conflicting accounts of who actually killed the governor. And I guess we will never know the truth about it, but. It may have been Somata or someone. And they started running back toward Tenpe. There was a point where you turn and then you, the road was straight so you can see Tenpe area. And there were a bunch of men who were already waiting for them there with machetes. And so they couldn't continue to run, you know, to run on the road. So they have to jump off the road, jump into the, uh, in, in the mangrove swamp. And as they hit the, you know, mangrove swamp, these conveyors were already on top of them. And the assistant had to abandon the governor. They chopped up this German governor with their machetes. And some of them pursued the, his assistant going out the mangrove swamp. So before the man was able to reach the other side of the mangrove swamp, he, they were already, he was already swamped with those men, with all their machines. The body of the governor was, was, was not taken out immediately. So they probably did some horrible things and just leave the body there. After they shot that governor, a New Orleans man swam all the way from Danbe to that reef, long reef, and then went to mission. Holborn and his German assistant Hefner were also killed, along with five more Tlaquis, when they left the Sokes priest's house and tried to flee by canoe. I heard that some of the Germans tried to hide from these Sokes people in the church at Tenpe. They were hidden by a priest. After that, they all went up to Wasai Nas and they had some Sakao speeches were given and all these speeches were 
plans on how or strategies as to what they were going to do next. So apparently they all decided that those who are willing to fight will have to go up on top of the Sokes cliff so that they can stay there. I guess they thought that they could build up stone walls to fight against the German when they sent in their troops. Meanwhile, the other Europeans on the island took refuge in the colony, which had been fortified by the Spaniards years before. Dr. Gershner, the acting German governor, appealed to the chiefs of the other kingdoms for help in guarding the colony against the Sokes people. Each of the kingdoms sent a hundred men to assist. I think that uh, the Nanmarkis were supporting but uh, not overly. Why I said I feel that way? Because they are against the uh, Germans trying to take away their uh, power over the people. But there is clear evidence that as soon as the rebellion erupted, a lot of them from other, all other chieftains came to the colony with their own rivals and stuff to help secure the, you know, um, the colony. So guess people were never liked during those days because they were very hostile toward other people. Hostile in the sense that, you know, they have, they control two channels here. One is the one separating uh, Sokas Island and the main island. And people from Kichi or people from other places would shorten their trip if they go through these channels. But sometimes these Sokas people would block this channel and not allow them to, you know, pass through there. Apparently if you, if you come on a canoe and, and then you paddle through their, their channel, then make sure you're prepared. When you meet up with another canoe, you fight for your right of way. The Sokes warriors found refuge at the top of Sokes Cliff, where they built a fortress of rocks. There they remained, even as German ships began arriving with troops during the next month or two. Finally, there were five German warships in harbor with enough troops and weapons to begin a full campaign against Sokes. Those who wanted to be involved in the rebellion, uh, all of them got together on top of the cliff. See, they even had binoculars so that they can stay there and watch what's going on in the colony. And uh, while they were up there, apparently a few weeks there was this gunner boat that came in. It came in all the way to between Ninsaitam and Sokets and fired a cannon up there. A guy was climbing a, a tree so, they can have, so that he can have a clear view of the colony, not knowing that those people had their powerful binoculars had already detected where, where he was. And their ship fired one shot and hit the bottom of the tree and blew up the tree and the guy went with it. But there was another boat that came in with black people. And those that ship brought in some black people. And those black people were sent to the channel. They surrounded the island so they could the people from Sokes can uh, escape into the mainland. They couldn't do it in group, they couldn't do it during the daytime. So they did that by sending few people at a time, by they dive when it's high tide, so that they can dive under the water all the way to the other side in the mangrove swamp and then crawl up. They plan it so that every night, three or four people would cross five or seven would cross so that at different 
part of the channel so that the Melanesian wouldn't be able to, you know, detect that they were already crossing. They didn't have any bullets to fight with. So they have to sneak into town. And you know the cave? Apparently that cave is an old cave. You know the cave that is under a uh, legislative building? That's where they kept the, uh, their munition. And so they, my grandfather and this guy went there and they had to kill a Melanesian uh, sentryman so that they can get in there and get some food. But they can only grab a handful. They couldn't, they didn't get many, uh, much out of it. The German troops began their assault on the peak of Sokaz Island, where the insurgents had dug in to resist the attack. During their ascent, the German troops were under constant fire. But when they finally took the summit, they found that the Sokaz men had slipped away. They built up walls and waited for the German to approach as the German and the uh, the Melanesian, you know, soldiers were scaling the cliff. They cut their rope and then rolled, the, rolled down the stones and hit some of those uh, people who were scared. That's the, uh, one of the only defense by rolling uh, these boulders down against the Melanesian soldiers and the German officers. For the next month, the German forces pursued the remnants of the Sakez warriors around the island. They did visit their Tukumban by clan members in all of the municipalities, but it was toward the end when the people, their clan members, realized that there was no point to giving them any assistance. It's a, it's a dead end. The insurgents no longer had their heart in the fight. Each day, a few of the fugitives turned themselves into the Germans until in mid-February 1911, the last of the Sokaz fugitives surrendered. On one of the islands, either Zabak or Mantor, is the final decision was made to release the, the Banway from that area. Them to stop. It's just stop fighting. Rajra arrested. I believe they came down on their own. Because I'm not going to wait. I can't even say that. There's no way for you to get away with this. I mean, that's our band. I'm not going to be able to do it. Within a few days of the surrender of the last of the Sokes men, the Germans tried and convicted 17 of the leaders of the uprising. They then led the condemned men to an old cemetery outside the colony, lined them up in front of a mass grave, and executed them by firing squad. The execution occurred on February 24, 1911. The decisions were made that the 17 people will be uh, executed. 15 or 17, uh, but, uh, Samuel and uh, his followers, relatives, were to be exiled. February 23rd, that was the date that the, uh, the rebels 
were allowed to go to church before they died. Most of them are Catholic. Only one is a Protestant. Well, I know that there was a young boy who was executed in place of his uh, clansman. He was shorter than the others, very short, that they put him on a box to be in level with the uh, other people. There was a story I heard, yeah, I guess from my grandfather, who said uh, uh, there was, before the Somadao and his uh, fellow rebels were executed, uh, Somada was concerned about him wearing, uh, you know, Western pants. I mean, his, his, his clothes were, were not washed. Somada was, was the one who wanted to change his clothes. The younger one said, this isn't a wheel in our men's clothes. So you can die right now. When he came and looked down at the uh, so-so, there was uh, water in the and he said, uh, the toilet made no pisikasek. They were very brave up to the moment they were shot. They know what's coming, but they didn't uh, shut down their mouth. They were talking. They were shot at that common light by the soldiers from New Guinea. One lady was, he, he came from Tomorolo in Kiti, Tomorolo, near Senwar, where the Catholic Church is. Eh? Because one of his sons, maybe, sons or brother, was with those that were to be shot, killed. When she reached Tulan here, she heard the cuts, eh? sound of the cuts. She felt fainted. The remainder of the Sokaz inhabitants, some 426 people, were exiled to Palau. Their land was confiscated and given away to others. Everyone was vanished to Palau, I think. And the landmark must have been with them. Everyone in Soka has left the island. Well, not all of the Soka's people. After the rebellion, those people who were involved in one way or another, especially the Tupulak and the Tupulbani, they were banished from Soka's. After that, they were replaced by people from Pengalak, people from the Morlak. There was a story about the family in Sokes, and they were, they were allowed to stay there, and I think the family is still there, because they took care of one of the hands of the governor. My uh, great-grandmother, uh, Sikudo's wife, uh, took the bomb, buried it, and took the ring off. And after the war, they were looking for the ring, and they found out that my great-grandmother was the one who, who buried it. Ima leta men pon pe koros kalbilip tasang sokes. Ah, sapul men mo sapun sokes penay na ikalip may santi ang nanumin sap. When they they went on a ship, when they went to Yap, while they were uh, waiting for the ship to continue on. All the able men were made to work in whatever public works project that the German were doing in Yap until the ship is ready to you know, depart. Then they get back on the ship and they go to, and uh, then they would continue on to plan. They were taken to Palau and were taken to Aymelik and they were told this is where you're gonna settle. They plot out, you know, a track of lands for people to start building their thatch houses and 
and stuff like that. They were first sent to Yap, and then from Yap to Palau. I heard that in Yap they were sharing one small uh, bowl of rice among maybe four people. But after a while, those who were exiled to Palau, they could uh, plant things, and later on, they started harvesting their own produce. My uncle was born in Aimelit, but my father was born here. He was a little boy when he was exiled. When the Japanese came in, Japanese uh, representative went there and made an announcement that all those people who were then in Aimelik, who want, wanted to return to Pompeii, they may do so. But they require them to have relatives from here to go to Palau so they can identify their relatives, put them on the ship and bring them back to Pompeii. One family that I know of, they up, they came back and resettled their own land or their relatives' land in Sokes, in Palakar. Palakar, not, uh, not the main uh, island of Sokes. And if you go to Palau, you will also find their relatives there. Uh, some of those people married and they have, they have families established there. Now, Mark in Palau, Kasapasapo, in Sokes. A rebellion is a boy who can name a mod, monted, me, middle round. Loyal amen, Palla. A Lugo Goros Cobur Brot. A relay bone be so last of Ral Sugars. A repolar and our penane and wait. Sugars is going through a political revolution. Uh, traditional political revolution, in a sense that the landmark title was bestowed during the Japanese time. And prior to that, you have different clans trying to claim the leadership of Sokais, especially Sokais Island. And they had to wait until the 1940s for the landmark but in Sokais to be bestowed. When I came to junior high school in Colonia Intermediate. There was a Melanesian police, still alive, staying in town. Anna is the name. I came to school here in 1959, and Anna was still walking around Colonia, doing the marches, you see. When she was kind of, he was kind of, uh, because when uh, we asked him to, uh, to uh, how they march during the German time, he would do the march. Our column is falling apart. It is the time the outside languages came to our island. It started from the outer islands of Pulpi all the way down to other islands of Duke, even Yap. We started moving. But when I think back, it's, it's really injustice what the Germans did to the surface. What can Germans do to, to help out? The real Sukhais people, now they are scattered around here in Pendleton. They are scattered around. One day, something's going to be happening in return of what happened to those natives of Sukhais. Ekona, Uwei Koros and Kasambalki. Rebellion day. Ah, Rebellion day. Ah, Rebellion day. 